urinary bladder. Okay? This represents the urinary bladder. This, of course, is the male. This is the female. End of the urinary bladder. There's an area on the floor the lining called the trigon. It's kind of a triangular area, like an inverted upside down triangle. And it's marked by three openings. Two upper ones, you only see one here because you only got half of it, is the opening of the ureter, <coughs> and it'll be on the other side too. And then the one at the base here is the opening into the urethra. It's kind of a smooth area here. That's called the trigon. That's a region inside the urinary bladder, the lining distinguished by these three openings. Above or superior, the openings of the two ureters bringing in urine from the kidneys. Inferior, the opening into the urethra, the two bringing urine from the kidneys, excuse me, from the urinary bladder to the outside of the bottom. That's called the trigon. You have to see that on the bottoms. Now the urethra, as I said, is the single tube that drains urine from the urinary bladder to the outside. In females, it's relatively short. By the way, you might want to look at page 981, 987, if you're not already there in your textbook. Females are fairly short, the urethra. In males, it's longer for very obvious reason. Males have a penis, and most of the urethra runs through the penis. In the male, though, there are three regions, which I'd like you to know in the urethra. So if you're asked to trace the urine, you'll probably get through the male. So it's got three regions, all right? All right, we start here with a part of the urethra that runs through a gland that is unique to males, called the prostate gland. Not prostrate, but prostate. The urethra runs right through it. So this part is called the prostatic urethra. The part of the urethra that runs through the prostate gland, prostatic urethra. Then there's a short portion of the urethra that runs through what's called the urogenital diaphragm. And that's a band of skeletal muscle. And this part is called the membranous urethra. It's a little short portion right here. Okay, you're gonna have to look at the models. Right, so again, here's the prostate, and that part the urethra runs through the prostate. There's a prostatic urethra. The short part that runs through the stand of skeletal muscle is a membranous urethra. See there and there. And then the longest part, which runs through the penis, okay, this is being bothered by. Did you hear about it? Okay, two years ago. We had some issues with the husband. Maybe it's probably two years ago. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's certain organs. Anyway. This is one of the part of urethra that runs through the penis. And this is called the penile urethra or the spongy urethra. Okay, you only see a little portion because we don't have the whole penis here, obviously. And that's the longest portion of the urethra in males. So again, in males, prostatic urethra running through the prostate gland and the membranous urethra running through the urogenital diaphragm, that band of skeletal muscle here. And then the part that runs through the penis, the longest part of the urethra, called the penile or spongy urethra. It's called the spongy urethra because it runs through a rectal tissue, we'll talk about later when we get to the reproductive system, called the corpus spongiosum. It's like a sponge, got little cavities in it, little sinuses, which the blood circulates. And you probably know what brings about a erection in the male, the sexual excitement is simply blood gets trapped in the penis, in these little sinuses, in these columns of rectal tissue, around the urethra, the corpus spongiosum, and then the two other columns, you see part of them here, which would be corpora cavernosa, but we'll talk more about this later. <coughs> so again, you're tracing the flow of the urine. You see, you'll probably have to trace it through the male, prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and then the penile or spongy urethra to the outside. Of course, the opening is called the urethral orifice. That's the opening of the urethra to the outside, the cure is passed. And notice there are two sphincters. This is on the urethra for the bottom of the page. We have, again, an internal sphincter and an external sphincter. The internal sphincter is smooth muscle. So 
an internal urethral sphincter is involuntary, which means you have no control over it, like the internal anal sphincter. A certain pressure builds up, it releases. What gives us control of our bladder is the other sphincter, which is skeletal muscle, and that's called the external urethral sphincter. That's skeletal muscle over which you have conscious control. That's what allows you to hold it, okay? And one of the first things a child has to do is what? Potty train, okay? Now they control the bowel, but also control the flow of urine. You have to learn to control those sphincters. And again, it's the external urethral sphincter, skeletal muscle, that gives you the control. Just like in the GI tract, it's the external anal sphincter which gives you control of the bowel. Okay, and again, the urethral diaphragm, that's that band of skeletal muscle. And in that is where you see the external urethral sphincter. It's like a little ring around it, okay? Almost like a little donut. That's the external urethral sphincter. It's skeletal muscle, and again, that's what you control. And that's it both sexes, okay? In the male, you can also see it in the female. Okay? See it right here. There's the urogenic diaphragm, and again, there's the external urethral sphincter. You can see how much shorter the urethra is in females versus males. It's because of this that females are more prone to urinary tract infections. So you've got a much shorter urethra. And usually the distal urethra has bacteria. And the bacteria don't have far to go to get up to the urinary bladder as a result of the UTI, urinary tract infection. And males, of course, have a much longer urethra. Bacteria have to migrate farther. Not only that, but you can see the distance between the urethral orifice right here and the anus is much shorter than it would be in the male and that's why kids are taught especially little girls you wipe away okay right back away so you don't take fecal matter and contaminate the urethral orifice and thus end up with the UTI urinary tract infection because the major source of UTIs are usually intestinal bacteria like E. coli, fresh E. coli 